Now, Bob, I know you haven't uh, obviously grown the organization on your own. You are well known for having a very strong, committed team. But how would you say you've helped develop that culture of creativity, innovation, and partnerships? Well, there, there's a few different ways, and it, re it really starts on the front end, and that's, that's with hiring. Um, you have to be looking for a certain individual. And, you know, and when you talk about hiring, just in terms of the process, I, I think, I know for myself, uh, I bet you 50% of it is gut feel. And I know that that may seem a little extreme because there's always so many technical things to a person's background in terms of experience, education, etc. cetera. But uh, at least at the executive level, you kind of all, you assume that there's a certain skill level and everything else because whether you're you're hiring for a general manager position or a vice president position, um, you know they're going to have the credentials to back that up. So then, really, what does it come down to? Uh, and I know uh, for me personally, what it comes down to is is feel and what it, what is your gut on that person. Uh, you know, first impressions mean so much. And then as you go through the interview process, which you know, it has a formal component, but I like to also include an informal component, whether it's over meal or, or something like that, so you can actually, you know, see the person. So, you know, do you have a really positive uh, attitude in terms of how they interview and, and just their outlook on, on life, both business and, and personal, but is it someone that is genuinely enthused about what they're doing and when they talk about what they're doing, that's really, really critical. Um, and the second component to that, which I guess is more of a cultural thing, is you have to determine whether that's a fit. Uh, you, you could have someone that hits all of the criteria, but if you don't feel based on uh, their background and how they present themselves that they would actually fit into the culture of your organization, uh, which doesn't mean that they're a bad candidate, it just means that it's just, it's just not the right, uh, the right fit. So that's important, to, that's important as well. And if you're able to determine those things, and you know, it's always a bit of a roll of the dice when you're, when you're hiring people, but, but genu genuinely, generally, you will be successful. Now, once you bring them in uh, to the group, and, and we find this at different levels of our organization, but there's, there's a process that's very important to it, which kind of flows into the culture. Um, once you go through the hiring process, they come into an orientation process. And that is, some of it's very, very, you know, uh, factual, that where they go through, you know, kind of the book, if you will. But another component is that is what we call service first training, which is our uh, kind of official uh, motto and, and, and our vision of, of how we uh, conduct ourselves from a guest point of view. So they go through that training as well. Now, when they, when they come into their departments, all of our departments have what we call service first mentors. So you are constantly working with somebody who is tasked with ensuring that that culture and that commitment uh, to exceeding a guest expectation, something that's a very intuitive level of service, that is always being monitored. And then it's up to us to continue to monitor that, to continue to measure that at many different levels to ensure that that exists. And, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, like anything else in, with business, if you find that you're not successful, either by our fault uh, or by the individuals, most of the time it's our fault because when you make the hire, you know, sometimes you do make mistakes, then you have to make a change. But it's so critical to the culture of the organization and what the experience of the guest is that you just can't let up.